Hey guys, today we're actually going to be doing a bunch of Algebra 2 review. Pretty much everything that I'm going to go through on this page in this video is Algebra 2 review. Um, so this is just going to be a brief refresher of your memory on stuff with I, how to foil I, how to combine like terms, what I squared is. Reviewing complex numbers, um, they look like this, A plus BI. For whatever reason, they usually always put the I part last. Um, that's just how the textbooks do it. That's how our answer keys and how our tech, our um, worksheets and everything look like. And know that the first part without the I is referred to as the real part. The second part with the I is the imaginary part. You should also remember from Algebra 2 that I squared equals negative 1. And therefore, the square root of negative 1 is just I. Okay? Um, powers of I... So i to the first is just i, because anything to the first power is itself. i squared, by definition, is negative 1. And so then what would that make i to the third? Do you agree that it's the same thing as i squared times i, which is actually negative 1 times i, therefore negative i? Okay, and then the fourth one, i to the fourth, isn't that just i squared times i squared? So aka negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. Keep stuff like that in mind. Again, this should be review from Algebra 2, but those are the first four of the i powers. i to the first, second, third, and fourth. So the review topic here, the goal in order to simplify something that looks like i to the seventh, is to change it into i to the fourth times something else. So four i's, but I need to have seven total, which means it's i to the fourth times i to the third. So remember when you multiply things like that, you add exponents. So I'm just rewriting this using i to the fourth because I know i to the fourth is one. And if I scroll back out, I remember that i to the third, I already simplified that up here, it's negative i. So one times i to the third is negative i. So this whole thing, i to the seventh, simplifies to negative i. What about i to the 22nd? I'm going to try and rewrite this as i to the 4th to something. So i to the 4th to the 5th is 20. Then I have two more i's left over. So remember, I just have to think in terms of i to the 4th because that's what equals 1. I need to know how many powers of 4 do I multiply this to. That gives me 5. And so that makes i to the 20th, so therefore there's two more. That equals my original 22. i to the 4th is just 1. So essentially what we did in Algebra 2 is you can just cross that out. 1 to the 5th power is still just 1. So this whole sim thing simplifies to just i squared, which is negative 1. So you're looking for powers of 4, and you can raise that i to the 4th to a certain power in order to um, change it into 1. i to the 4th to the 5th, that gives you 20. If I would have done 6 here, that's 24. That's too many. That's why I did i to the 4th to the 5th. That makes 20. There's two more left. So that's negative 1. Let's do a couple more. i to the 120th. So how many powers of 4 is that? So basically, 4 times what gives me 120 or something really close to 120? Well, that's 30 exactly, because 4 times 30 is 120 with none left over. So there's nothing there that I need. Therefore, i to the 4th to the 30th cancels. It's just 1, because i to the 4th is 1, 1 to the 30th is 1. Here's something you may have forgotten about. What about negative exponents? So remember what this means is 1 over i to the 5th. And hopefully what you remember from Algebra 2 also is that um, i's work a lot like radicals do. You can't leave an i in the denominator of a fraction. This is not considered simplified. So what I have to do is I have to multiply by a bunch of i's in order to cancel these in the bottom. And so I can only multiply by groups of 4 because i to the fourth equals one. That's our goal for all of these games that we're playing here with these i's. So I'm gonna take this i to the negative fifth, and I'm gonna multiply it by i to the something so that I can cancel all of these five i's in the denominator. So if I just did i to the fourth, I would still have a negative i exponent. So what if I did eight? My options are four, eight, 12, 16, 20. It's groups of fours. So I'm going to multiply this by i to the 8th. 4 would not cancel all of these negative numbers. That's why I did 8. 
And so remember how to multiply stuff with exponents. This is negative 5 plus 8. That actually gives me i to the third. And again, that's up at the top in that row that we filled in. i to the third is the same as negative i. So your goal for these is to cancel all the negative i's. If I could do another example here, um, let's do i to the negative 17, for example. And so I need to multiply that by i to the negative 17 times i to the something so that I can cancel all those negative exponents. Well, if I multiply by 4, it's still going to be a negative exponent. 8, 12, 16. Ooh, let's do 20. Because remember, this is just 1. Because it's i to the 4th to the 5th. That would give me i to the third, which is, again, negative i. So the goal there is to always cancel all of those i's that end up in the denominator. And you can only do groups of fours when you're multiplying because that equals 1. Okay, so that was just another side example. Okay, something a little bit easier. Treat i's like x's when you're combining like terms. So don't forget to distribute your minus sign here. But all we're doing um, here is subtracting, a.k.a. combining like terms. So that means 7 minus 3i minus 14 plus 2i because it's minus negative. So all I'm doing here, you guys, is I'm combining my like terms. 7 and negative 14 makes negative 7. And then negative 3i and positive 2i makes negative i. And yes, they usually always write the i part last. It's not wrong if you write negative i minus 7, but just get in the habit of staying consistent with what the textbook always does. The i part goes last. Here we're foiling. So what's the difference between the problem we just did and this one? Well, this one had a minus sign in it. No offense, but do not foil that out. That means subtract over here. We're foiling. Okay, so very slowly I'll go through this. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times negative 7i is negative 35i. Negative 2i times 4 is negative 8i. And this becomes positive 14i squared. And so, so far, that's just foiling, pretending like the i is an x, and that's not doing anything different. What you need to recognize here, though, is that i squared is negative 1. Remember that? That changes this sign of the 14. So it becomes a minus 14. So I have 20. I'm going to combine these. That makes negative 43i and then negative 14 because it's positive 14 times negative 1. So just keep that in mind um, that we're changing our i squareds into negative 1s. And that means I can combine this and this, which makes 6, and then minus 43i. I always read the i part last just because that's technically what you're supposed to do. I told you that i's act a lot like uh, radicals do, and so we have to rationalize this problem, unfortunately. We can't leave this i in the denominator. So what I'm going to multiply by here is 4 minus 3i, top and bottom, exactly like we do with radicals. Okay, so I'm going to go through the top slowly. I'm going to get 24 minus 18i minus 8i plus 6i squared. Yes, there's a lot of simplifying I can do to that. I'll do that in a second, but that's what happens strictly just when you FOIL. Um, and then the denominator, this is going to work out nicely. So I do 4 times 4, which is 16. And then look when I do 4 times negative 3i, and then 4 times positive 3i. Those middle terms will cancel out. It ends up being minus 12i plus 12i. So all I have to do is do positive 3i squared times negative 3i squared, which gives me negative 9i squared. And again, this is negative 1, and this is negative 1, and I can combine these like terms. So there is some simplifying that you can do after you do your foiling. Um, I'm going to get 24, and this is going to turn into a negative 6, you guys. So that's where I'm going to get positive 18. And then I'm going to combine these terms here. Negative 18 minus 8 is negative 26i. And then what's the denominator going to become? 16 minus negative 9. So this i squared changes the sign of the 9, which becomes positive. So that just makes it a whole number, 25, in the bottom. And remember how when you rationalize stuff, your goal is to get rid of the radical? In this case, our goal is to get rid of the i. And now I just have a whole number in the bottom. That is exactly why we rationalize. One thing that you'll need to just check for, just to make sure, remember the heart method, sometimes these will reduce. In this case, it doesn't. So we're finished with our answer like that. We don't have to reduce anything. I am going to skip this problem. 
That we're not gonna look at. Let's go to letter I. This is something that's not new or not old info. This is something that's new. What I'm gonna do for this problem is I'm gonna actually do a system of equations to solve it. I need to group this into real stuff and imaginary stuff. Again, here's some imaginary stuff and here's some real stuff. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to separate out, I'm gonna set my real part equal to my real part. So 2x plus y equals nine. That's just the blue part. Also, what I'm gonna do is take this i out. It's like a GCF. I'm just gonna rewrite it like that. Then I'm gonna set my imaginary part equal to my imaginary part also. And so I have three. I'm getting rid of the i's though. I'm just grouping my parts together. So I'm gonna kinda cancel the i on each side of just the red equations and I'm gonna do x minus y. Do you see this as something you could solve doing, I don't know, substitution or elimination? Maybe it'd be easier if I rearrange some stuff a little bit. And x minus y equals three. Do you recognize being able to solve something like that? All I did is I brought the three over to this side and the x minus y over to this side. Where do these equations come from first? Well, I identified everything that didn't have an i in it which is 2x plus y, and on the other side, this didn't have an i in it. So that became my first equation. Then everything that did have an i, this part and this part, I factored it out. Basically, I canceled the i's from all of them after I grouped them together. That left me with 3 equals x minus y. So that's my second equation. All I have to do here is solve this using substitution or elimination. If you do elimination right away and add straight down, you get 3x equals 12, which means x equals 4. And then all you have to do is plug that x in right there to get y equals one. And those are my two, that's my answer for x comma y. Last part I'm gonna go through you guys, this is another part that is new. Did you know that we can graph a plus bi? It's almost exactly the way we graph x and y, but we have this new vocab word called the modulus. Now this is very exciting. To me, it means hypotenuse. Okay, so graph and find the modulus. This is graphed exactly like, pretend like this is the x and this is the y. Okay, that's all we're gonna be doing here. So I'm gonna graph right five, down three, right here. And the modulus is this. So find that, remember how this is five. This makes a right triangle. So the modulus equals, I'm going to do the square root of 5 squared plus negative 3 squared. That gives me 25 and 9, which is 34. It's just doing a Pythagorean theorem situation. The modulus is this right here. Let's do one more and then we'll be finished. 2i, okay, this looks a little bit different, but this is the same as 0 minus 2i. So how would I graph that? I would go left or right 0, and I go down 2i. Okay, so again, if I'm going to do my modulus, it doesn't really make a triangle, but I can still do the square root of x squared plus y squared. It gives me a modulus of square root of four, which is two. That is all for today, you guys. That was mostly review, a couple new things. We will continue tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.